When it comes to T-Sports Esports, there's one league that stands out among the pack. I'm talking about the NBA 2K League. So preparation for Season 3 is underway, and to chat all about it, we have 76ers Gaming Club's breadwinner. Welcome to the show. Thank you, man. So excited to have you on. Uh, a lot of things are starting to pick up uh, with the draft coming up soon. But I want to know first, how have you been spending your offseason? Uh, my offseason, I'm still working. Taking care, of, taking care of my daughters. That's about it. All right. How much? How much hours are you like? How many hours are you putting in per day? Like, what's the usual practice routine? I usually wake up at about. We usually got to go in at like seven a.m. and probably get off at four p.m. I got off at seven p.m. yesterday. Sometimes we work twelve hour shifts. It just depends. Wow, that's that's insane hours. But of course, we know you know this is a full time job, really. Um, right. But I want to know more about it. I know you vlog a little bit. Uh, tell me what's like yes, your daily day is like. My daily day is waking up at six in the morning. I'm going to work at seven. Usually getting off at like around four, and then uh, and then after that, it's just it's that's it. Just just family after that. And then I wake up and I do the same thing again. Now, I think a lot of people, you know, outside of the scene, you know, we're, you guys are playing games as a job. Does it feel like a job to you at this point, or do you still just, like, love playing? It still feels like a lot of fun for you. Uh, of, course, of course, it was funner in the beginning <laughs> when, it was, uh, when it was a hobby. And you know what I mean? When I worked all day and I came home, I would be so excited to get on the game. But now it's kind of like uh, I don't really have that much time for it now as if it's the off season. On that note, so for you personally, what was the moment that made you decide you wanted to get serious and make this a career? Uh, probably, probably like 2K17. When I first started playing 2K17 and the road to the finals came around, and then uh, they first announced that it was going to be a league. I mean, I've been playing 2K since I was a kid. So if I, had, I knew if I had the chance to be in a league, I was going to take it. Wow, and then was there any hesitations for you uh, stepping into the, the league, playing it professionally? I mean, the only hesitation would be leaving my daughters for uh, for so long. But, I mean, other than that, like, you know what I mean? You tell me I can play 2K and I don't have to go to work. You don't have to tell me twice. But leaving is the only issue. But, you know, we come home a lot. You know what I mean? Our family can come visit us a lot. So it's not as everyone makes it seem. I think a lot of people, when they think of esports, they think of like kids playing the game. But obviously, with different scenes, there are people with families uh, like yourself. Right. Um, how how do your kids and your family take this job? Like, does your daughter do your daughters understand what you're doing? <laughs> they definitely understand because I, I mean, I, I have older daughters, so they they know that I, you know, what I mean, when I have my spare time, I want to play the game. <laughs> so they've been knowing that. So now they just know, like, okay, daddy has to leave to go play the game. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that, I mean, other than that, they, they, all, they understand. If your daughters want to play 2K when they grow up, what would you say to them? I mean, I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind now. You know what I mean? The, the older generation, it seems like, nah, you need to go work a nine to five. Like, that's not, that's not legit. But now it's, it's grown so huge. And you know what I mean? Every, every year we're making more and more money. So uh, I, would, I wouldn't have a problem with it. You know what I mean, I always tell them, you can do whatever you want. That's awesome to get that support. Uh, let's talk about this upcoming year, though, because lots of things are happening, especially for the 76ers. They chose to protect most of its roster. Um, so there's you, there's Radiance, Steez, and Screddy, uh, or ZDS. I don't know how you want to refer to him as. It doesn't as. matter. <laughs> he wants to just make it confusing for all of us. Um, right. Explain to me why this core is so important. I mean, coming in, coming in uh, this year for the tip-off, I, I was the only addition. It was Danny, Ethan, uh, Steve, and Screddy, ZDS, whatever you want to call them. So we won the tip up because I was the only addition. So, I mean, coming in, we, we had two weeks to scrim, and they already had chemistry. The only person that needed chemistry was me. So after we got it down packed, we knew we was going to be a great team. 
You know what I mean? I feel like if you if you come in with a core, which more teams is coming in with a core this year, last year it was the opposite. Mm -hmm. 76 was probably one of like five teams that kept their core. Mm -hmm. This year, it's a lot of teams that kept their core because they see what that what happens when you can actually build chemistry. You know what I mean? But mm -hmm. other than that, that I that's that, that's what that's what type of uh, people the 76ers are though. We gonna take it and we gonna run with it, and we feel like we can build it together. Just touching back on that tournament when you, where you came in, you said you only had two weeks to practice. Two weeks. That's insane. Uh, for you, coming into this league, and you probably know, like, this is your shot, right? Like, to, right. to make it. What, what were you thinking? How did you approach like, going into the tournament? I, I told everybody we was winning the tip-off when I first came. As soon as I came, I was like, we're we going to win the tip-off. Because it, it, for the tip-off, it's a brand new game. Nobody really knows how to play. We only have two weeks to scrim, so nobody really knows all the kinks out of it. So I feel like, I feel like it's uh, the tip off is all about the the team and the players because you have to play off IQ because we all don't know the game really. Mm -hmm. So I, and I feel like we had the best roster. So I said we was gonna win it. We won it, and then we went from there. That was insane. Um, so with the draft coming up, I want to know as a player, how much input do you have on drafting, you know, fellow teammates to the roster? Right. I mean, seven, for for the 76ers, like I said, we're a big family. So we, me and me and Kite, which uh, which is the coach, me and Steve, we talk every single day. We all have we all have input. Every single one of us have the same amount of input. It just comes down to us all agreeing. You know what I mean? Because when it comes down to the draft, we only can draft two people. And we just have to come down. We just have to have to all come together and agree on one person that we want to draft. Like last year, uh, when I when I dropped in the draft and it came up to the 19th pick, they all agreed. Like, okay, we want bread. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's going to be the same thing this year. Obviously, when you're looking for a new player, um, what is the most important to you? If it's skill or outside game qualities? It's, it's, it's all tied in. It's, it's not one thing that a great player can be. Of course, skill is the main thing, mm -hmm. but as we've seen throughout the two years, you can have the most skill in the world and still be a bad person. Even like we had Nudini last year, he might not have been the most skilled in other people's eyes, but he was the he was a great person. Mm -hmm. And and it comes down to us leaving leaving our families for six months and you have to be around individuals from all different backgrounds and we have to actually be around each other. We don't play the game all day. We have to actually interact with each other and talk to each other. Mm -hmm. So if you're a bad person and you have good skill, you, you know what I mean? You're not going to get very far. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned how, you know, the team is a family, was a family, but you have to let go of some right. players, right? How hard was that decision in that moment for you guys? It's very hard because we, I mean, if we could keep our whole team, we would be, we would probably be the only team that would keep our full six. So, I mean, at the end of the day, we all know what we signed up for, and we know in the beginning of the year, because I told Kite from the beginning, y'all have y'all core, and I'm just coming in for this year. You know what I mean? I just want to win this year, because we can't think of we can't think about everything else afterwards, because we know eventually two of us gonna have to leave. Mm -hmm. And you know what I mean? We didn't we we didn't sit there when it came up to retirement. We didn't sit there and say take bread or take bread. You know what I mean? Send send him in the pool. Send him in the pool. That was never the issue. It was about us doing great that year and us sitting sitting down with each other and telling each other, like, we went to three finals out of four at the end of the day. So whatever happens, we had a great year. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. On that note, just with the whole draft concept, that it's, that's something so different that other esports don't see. Um, do you, like you mentioned, like, there seems to be some frustrations with having to you know, retain some and let go of some. Right. Um, do you think this is a beneficial format to manage players and rosters and stuff like that? At the end of the day, it's all about balance. And they don't want to, they don't want one team to be better than the other. Mm. If 76ers can keep every single player on their team, it would be me, Shreddy, Ethan, Steez, and Feast. Mm -hmm. And whoever else. That would be, that would be unfair. Mm -hmm. So, of, of course... It, they have to die that down and you know what I mean we have to let go players for one team not to be this much better than the other team because clearly next game in one season one but then the T Wolves won season two mm -hmm. you know what I mean so it's all about balance and then the new teams coming out coming in if we can keep all five of our players what are the new teams going to do
Interesting, interesting. Uh, the league, speaking of mixing it up, the league actually is taking a very proactive uh, way to uh, create opportunities globally, you know, with like the European Invitational, there's the right. Asia Pacific one happening as well, uh, for players, new players to be discovered. So what are your thoughts on the whole like widening scope of the league? I love it, man. I love it. BD, uh, he's a, he's a great, he's great at everything. And he, he wants the league to succeed, like, way above expectations. So just with uh, the women coming in the league, the uh, it doesn't matter where you're from. If you can if you can play 2K, we want we want to see you play 2K at the end of the day. It doesn't matter if you're in China. It doesn't matter. So at the end of the day, it's all about all different backgrounds coming together and playing something we love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That That's really exciting. I love how like coming from an outside i've never really gone to east uh, right. traditional sports esports until i encountered the nba 2k and right. the environment is just so different and you your energy the energy is honestly very different than other esports um so i want to know this is season three coming up for you guys what are your eyes on and how are you guys going to make it happen our eyes on the same thing it was last year is the championship of course we won we uh we lost last year in the finals of the biggest championship but at the end of the day our goal was to get there and we got there we just didn't finish the job so at the end of the day this year we went to three finals last year out of four this year we want to go to four finals out of four and we want to win all four that's right that's right uh, totally you guys have a, such a great core and so it's going to be very interesting to see how this team comes together. I'm sure you guys have been practicing a lot. So on behalf of squad, I want to say good luck in this upcoming season. I'm sure you guys will kill it. Thank you very All right? much. Take care. Thank you so much. Bye.